Hello developers, my name is Matt Rabel. Happy Halloween. Today I'm dressed as Octoman with my Octa cape, Octa shirt, and my J hipster glasses. What I'd like to show you today is how to develop a mobile application with Ionic, Angular, Spring Boot, and J hipster. Let's get started. To begin, I'd like to show you a little bit about Ionic. Ionic is basically a mobile framework for building applications, leveraging web technologies like Angular. You see here, you can also use React, and they do have view support as well. And you can also deploy it as a PWA to the web, so you don't have to do it on iOS or Android, and there's even Electron support. JHipster, on the other hand, is an application generator that generates a Spring Boot application with Angular, React, or Vue in the front end. So this screencast is based on a blog post that I wrote called Build Mobile Apps with Angular, Ionic 4, and Spring Boot. And at the bottom of it, you'll find a link to the completed application on GitHub. And so in this completed application, there is a demo.adoc, and this is what I will use for this screencast. And it's just a quick condensed version of the blog post, if you will, that makes it a little easier for you to see what I'm doing and you could also follow these steps if you wanted to do your own demo. This script is written in ASCII doc so I can very easily click the raw button and since I have the ASCII doctor plugin installed for Chrome it renders a nice pretty view. So we'll put that on the left and then we'll open up a terminal on the right and I already have jhipster installed so if I do jhipster version you'll see I have 641. If you don't have it installed, you'll need to do npm i-g generator j hipster, and that'll get you the latest version. I have zsh installed, so there's a cool command called take that'll create a directory and cd into it. And then I can grab this code right here to generate a new j hipster application. And so this import jdl command allows an inline application definition. So I'm configuring it with the name of OAuth2, Authentication type OAuth2, build tool, we use Gradle for this, and Protractor to verify everything works. You can see that took about a minute and a half to create. That time will depend on the speed of your internet connection. If you did not want to use JDL to create your application, you could create another application. As long as you're using OAuth2 for the authentication type, it should all work with this tutorial. So if you just type jhipster, it'll prompt you for all the values. So um, you'll notice it gives me a warning here that I'm in my home folder. That's one of the biggest mistakes you can make. Um, so if you were to make dir, like test, and then cd into that, then run jhipster, it would prompt you with all the options. So this one that I created previously uses all the defaults except for these that I overrode. So you can see monolith, microservices, uh, you can even do a UAA server. So if we did a monolith, uh, and then it prompts you for the name, the Java package, if you want to use jhipster registry, all kinds of different authentication types. And there's basically 26,000 different options that jhipster supports. So we can just remove that because we're in our app directory. And jhipster, I mentioned earlier that I was using ZSH or ZShell. Um, I'm also using oh my ZSH for my shell. And jhipster has a plugin. JH is the default uh, prefix. If I just use JH, that's a prefix for jhipster. But I can also use it to start Keycloak in a Docker container. So since we are using OAuth2, we try to make sure that you can run everything locally. And to do that, we use Keycloak. We leverage Keycloak 7.0 and run a Docker container that's pre-configured with all the jhipster default users, groups, roles. Keycloak is up and running and we can start our application using the built-in Gradle wrapper. So everything started successfully. Now we can open another terminal window and run our protractor test to verify that it created everything successfully. So that's npm run e2e and there is an error here with the latest version 641 and that's because it supports Chrome version 76. And so if you were to modify package.json search for web driver manager and update it to the latest version 12.1.7 then it'll work with chrome 78 which is what i'm using and then we can run npm run e2e 
to test our application, verify the authentication works, and the default pages render as expected. So that all works nicely and you got a quick overview of what the UI looks like. And I say quick, I mean quick. It only took, you know, 19 seconds to go through all the pages in the existing app. So now I'm going to create a web application on Okta to show you how easy it is to switch from using jhipster and keycloak to using jhipster and Okta. So I'll start by opening a new browser window and going to Okta here. And this is a account I already created. So if you go to developer.octa.com and you go into sign up, you could create your own account. And I already have one, so I'm going to log in. And I'll start by going to applications, add application, and web. I'll create a new application called jhipster for the win. And for the redirect URI, I'm going to use the one that's already coded into jhipster. So this is used for both Keycloak and for Okta. That's why you should put it in here. And then uh, we'll go ahead and save it. And then we'll also add a logout redirect URI. That's localhost 8080. So this is necessary for a logout in jhipster to work. So that's all set up. And then you'll need to set up some default groups. I already have them created. jhipster expects them to be named role admin and role user. And once you have that configured, you'll need to add the groups as a claim to your ID token. So if you go into the default authorization server, again, that was API authorization servers, and then click on the default one, and then click on claims, and add a claim, call it groups, specify the ID token, specify groups, and then use a matches regex and do dot star and create it and that's all you need to configure jhipster to work with okta and you can start your app using those settings so jhipster has all of its security settings configured if we were to look in source main resources config application.yml and search for security you'll see that it's configured to go to localhost 9080 for keycloak and then it's got web app as a client ID and a client secret. So rather than putting those new values for Okta in the YAML file, I'm just going to override them. So I'll open up uh, TextMate here real quick and I'll paste those values in there and then we need to grab those from our application. So if we go back to uh, our application and jhipster ftw and grab the client ID first of all put that right here and make sure you delete all the characters no dollar sign in front or trailing characters in the back and then if we go to API authorization servers we can grab our issuer URI and note that this actually when you copy and paste that it does have a carriage return so make sure and delete that or nothing will work so then grab those three lines go back to your terminal and control C and restart it with those Okta parameters for security and this will basically talk to Okta instead of Keycloak. So we can hit localhost 8080, hit sign in, and since we're already signed into our Okta organization you can see that we're signed in. If we were to go sign out we could sign in as a different user. For instance I have a demo user that is just a regular user and so they're not an admin and therefore they don't see the admin menu because they're not in that role admin group. So we'll go ahead and log out of that, close that, and we'll create a native application now for Ionic. And Keycloak doesn't quite require this um, but it's a little more wide open by default and so Okta is a little more locked down so I'm going to create a new native application by going to Applications, Add Application, 
and then native and then I'll call this ionic 4 for the win and I'm going to add a few different URIs I'm going to add localhost 8100 for when we're doing development in the browser and I'm going to add this URL dev.localhost.ionic because that's what we have hard coded into jhipster and then for the logout redirect URIs I have to add those after I create it so create it go to edit and then hit logout we'll add 8100 as well as this one here and you can also use a different URL for instance you can use the com.octa.dev one or you could use your company's com.company.application name those are all easily configurable if you go to look for generator jhipster ionic it has all the instructions you'll need to configure it differently so everything's in here Octa for authentication and uh, tells you how to change things here if you want to do that so now um, we also have to add some new claims and this is because what happens with Ionic and jhipster is jhipster will act as an OAuth resource server and so we're just going to pass an access token into it one of the things we could have done with jhipster is use that access token to go out and get the user information uh, but what I defaulted to is just having some certain claims in the access token groups given name and family name and then it'll be able to return the information uh, that jhipster will store so if we go to authorization servers again we go to default we go to claims we can add a claim again groups just like before except instead of the ID token we're going to put it in access token so again matches regex and we'll put them all in there and then we'll create a new one for the given name access token and this will be an expression and we'll do user dot first name and then add claim and family name in the access token expression user dot last name and if you need to know what all the different options are you can use the expression language guide and it's got all the different attributes that you can get to in there and all kinds of uh, expressions that you can do so we'll create that so now we have everything we need there and we'll close that down or we're gonna need that uh, we're gonna need that client ID in a second so I'll, I'll go ahead and leave that running JDL is jhipster domain language and that allows us to not only create applications jhipster but also entities so I'm gonna create a photo album using this photos.jdl so I'm going to create vi photos.jdl and then once I have that created I can do jhipster import jdl photos and it'll go and create not only all the entities but the liquid base files to populate the database as well as tests and all the UI code to crud those entities so you can see that took about 30 seconds to complete those and if we were to run our application um, let's go back to running it with Okta then we'll be able to see that there's an album there's photos and there's tags so we can tag our photos just like if you were using Flickr so open up localhost 8080 we can sign in And if we go to entities, you'll see there's an album and there's photos and there's a whole bunch of sample data in here because what we've noticed is as developers, a lot of times when you're testing things, you go in and add code or you add entities, you delete them, you manipulate them, you make everything sure everything works and having default data is sometimes just easier. So uh, if you want to turn that off, you can go VI source main resources config and it's in the application.dev for the dev profile and search for faker and you can see here liquidbase uses faker.js to pre-populate that so I don't like to have fake data at least for screencasts it doesn't look that great so I'm gonna go ahead and rm minus r I think it's in build h2 just deleting the database so it doesn't have that in there and then I can start everything again and this time that data won't be in there 
So while that's completing, let's go back to our script here and create an Ionic app. So we'll go ahead and create a whole new window here. And you want to do it side by side with your jhipster app or in a different directory, but not in the same directory as jhipster. So you'll want to install Ionic CLI. I already have that. 544, uh, Cordova, and Generator J Hipster Ionic. And I have all those installed, so I'm not going to go ahead and install those. But if you needed to install all of them, then just grab this copy paste and do that. And so there's an alias I created. By default, you should use Yo J Hipster Ionic. But I created an alias called Ionic 4J. I like Log4J. Thought it was a cute name. So you can run Ionic for J and it'll do the same thing as running yo j hipster ionic and then I'm going to call this application mobile and then it's located in app and that will use a starter that I created the ionic j hipster starter to not only create an application but then add OAuth into it because we're using OAuth for the backend so you can see that did take a couple minutes to run and if we scroll up you'll see that it creates everything and checks it into git um, but the part that I wanted to show you was right here where it adds a bunch of OAuth capabilities to Ionic so it's using Ionic app auth to create OAuth capabilities and Ionic storage to store the access tokens and then it creates all of these files to basically make it possible to do the Ionic stuff and this is all based on Ionic app auth and the example that they have and I just made it work within jhipster and ionic and so you can basically cd into mobile and the one thing you'll need to do is modify the auth service to use that new client ID that we created for the native application by default it uses what jhipster uses and it doesn't work um, with Octa by default so if you were to go to localhost 8080 uh, I think it's called API auth info this is what the Ionic app will call when it starts up to get the issuer. And the client ID that's returned is the one from jhipster. So we just need to override that for Ionic. So it's in source, uh, app, auth, and then auth service. And if you search for data.clientID, this is where you'll find it. And then if we go back here and go to our applications, and grab it from the native app then it'll be able to talk to Okta for authentication and then our jhipster backend as well so we can run ionic serve and now we have our application up and running we can click sign in hmm. let's try that again localhost 8080 oh. 8100 is our Ionic application. Let's make sure. Okay, so it's got some things in there. Let's shift reload, make sure it's not getting a stale version. It looks like it was. So now if I click sign in, ah, uh, this is interesting. So uh, by default, when I added that login redirect URI, it didn't create a trusted origin for Ionic. So I have to go back into Okta here under API Trusted Origins and add 8100. So it did add one for jhipster but not for the native application. So 8100 and then cores and redirect. So we save that and now if we were to refresh and click sign in, it knows that I'm already logged into Okta, it says welcome. So um, that all works now. That trusted origin is something that you will need to do. So I'll make sure and, and update any documentation that I have to include that. And now what we can do is we can generate screens for the Ionic application using import JDL as well. So Ionic for J, import JDL is its command, and it's in our app photos. And so now it's recompiling all of those. And if we were to go back here, and let me just take it out of that mode, and we click on entities, you can see that's where they are. And if we were to go back to our jhipster app, there isn't anything in there since we 
got rid of the faker stuff and if we were to go to entities album we could create a new one for instance VW buses and then we'll create it um, today which is Halloween 2019 and we'll put it in my account and so then if I were to go to album here you can see it's been created there as well so proof that we're talking you know to the same back end and then the next thing I want to do is show you how to make it into an iOS app so we can control C that one and go ahead and run Ionic Cordova prepare iOS And once that's done, you can open up Platforms, iOS, My App, XC Workspace in Xcode, and this is how you'll run it. So if you click on My App, and then Signing to make sure you've configured it for signing, and go ahead and start it up. And you can click sign in. And log in with your credentials. And if you click entities, you'll see that album's there. If we were to go back to our J Hipster app, we could add a new photo. Call it Hefe. It's my 66 bus. We'll upload a picture of him here from the parade. And this was uh, a couple years ago, so I think it was 2018. It's probably about 11 o'clock in the morning. And we'll put it in our VW Buses album. So we save that. And then if we were to go back here, go to Photo, you can see it shows up there. And if we were to add a new one, one of the features that Ionic has is the whole pull to refresh. So for to pull to refresh we would get the new photos that were added. So that's all working. There's also the ability to edit and delete. So if you were to swipe left you can click edit and then you could change anything you wanted. So you could say something like is awesome because he's got a Porsche engine in him so that's fun. And then you click done up here and if you wanted to delete it you could also click delete. And if you were to just click on it then it, uh, it just takes you to the view screen where you can edit or delete as well. So let's close that and close Xcode. And now we'll do it for Android. So make sure you're using Java 8, Java version. So I'm using OpenJDK 1.8. You can use Ionic, Cordova, Prepare, Android. Say yes to install it. Once that's finished, open Platforms Android in Android Studio, not in Finder. So I have an alias for Android Studio Platforms Android. And then under App, um, if it does prompt you to update Gradle, you can click OK, that's fine. And in the Android Manifest, there will be this launch mode specified right here. I'm going to change that to single task instead of single top. And then up here you can see your app, Pixel 2, I've already configured. If you don't have any AVDs or Android virtual devices configured, you have to go to this button here and add them. You can click Create Virtual Device, and then you can specify you know, Pixel 3, Pixel 2, whatever you like there. So I've already done that, and I can just run it. And then once that's running, you do have to run this ABD reverse to open ports between that virtual device and your local machine. So I'm just opening up TCP 8080 for JHipster. And if we go back to our device here and we click sign in, try signing in again. Oh, I know what it was. Um, since JHipster actually goes ahead and uh, grabs the information when it starts up uh, you have to have that ABD going before it starts so it's kind of the problem, one of the problems with the emulator so uh, we should be able to start this again just restart 
So now I grab that information from Okta instead of the key cloak stuff. And now we can hit demo. My super secure password. And we're logged in. If we were to go to entities, we could see that album is there. And if we were to go to photos, we deleted that photo. Oh, there it is. So there we are. Looking good, Hefe. And that's it. So I hope you've enjoyed this screencast of creating an Ionic application with JHipster. Uh, follow my team, Octadev, on Twitter. You can also follow me on Twitter at mrabel and never build off again. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. We try to post new videos every week or so. Hope you have a nice day. Happy Halloween.